Steeler fans, great to be with you. This is Kevin Smith doing another call sheet breakdown. And with the bulk of the offseason behind us and, and the Steelers and really all the NFL teams now heading into OTAs and then fairly shortly into minicamp, I thought it would be a great time to break out a new segment, a Steelers playbook segment, where we look at some of the concepts the team either already runs or is expected to run, particularly on offense, in the new scheme installed by coordinator Arthur Smith. And we're going to begin with the stretch and outside zone schemes, which are Smith's favorite run concepts. Two different schemes, very closely related, of the same family, same basic designs, but with some slight differences, and we'll get into all of that. So let's take a look here at Arthur Smith's favorite run play, the stretch and outside zone concepts. So if you look at the numbers over the past several years, you can get an idea for how much Smith really ran this scheme. In Atlanta between 2021 and 2023, he ran these two plays 630 times for an average of four and a half yards per play. That was almost twice as many uh, run uh, outside zone and stretch runs as the Steelers had over that time. They had 345 and about a half yard less success running them. In Tennessee in 2019 and 2020, Smith ran these schemes extensively as well and averaged five and a half yards per play. So it's been a really effective play for him, and I expect him to use it extensively in Pittsburgh. If you look at the scheme drawn up there, that's outside zone. And as you can see, the back's kind of got a three-way go. If you trace the red mark, the red line there that shows the running back's path, he's really on an aiming point for the inside leg of the tight end. And, he, and he's got kind of a three-way go there. The, the rule that a back is often taught is, ba is bang, bend, or bounce. Bang, bend, or bounce. Bang it right there in the C-gap, that gap in between the, the tackle and tight end, if you can get it in there, right? I mean, if this if this gap is open, bang that thing right up in there. That is, that's really where you want to hit the play. That's the sweet spot. If the defense over-pursues, if you get a lot of linebacker pursuit, these guys flying over the top, you can now bend this thing back into the B gap, make that linebacker wrong. And then if the defense is slow to flow, if they're playing these cutback schemes, you can bounce this thing. This thing can go out wide into the D gap. Schematically, you can see all the linemen are moving in the same direction. Everybody's reaching to their play side gap. A lot of communication. This is a tricky play to block because there's a lot of communication required. For example, if you look here at the combo block of the guard and tackle, they've got two to block the nose here and the mic. And they got to work two to two to, uh, and communicate who's staying on the nose, who's chipping off to the mic. An awful lot of reps and communication required to make the outside zone scheme work. The difference between outside zone and stretch is, is pretty basic. Whereas outside zone's a three-way go for the back, stretch is going outside the whole way, right? Stretch is going to have some kind of edge scheme that's going to allow the back to get outside. So if we're looking at this particular diagram and, and you wanted to run stretch, you might see the Z come down, pre-snap motion, and then crack that safety. Uh, and now this tackle would pull around and kick out the corner and the back would take it outside and try to hit it up in the alley there in between the hash and the number. So stretch is just designed to go outside, whereas outside zone is a three-way go. All right, let's get to the video and take a look at some of this uh, this scheme as Smith ran in Atlanta, and then we'll compare it to some of what the Steelers have done recently. All right, as we break this thing down, this is Smith in Atlanta running outside zone from this past season. That's B. John Robinson as his tailback. They're in a balanced set, what we call an ace set, double tight with two wide receivers. It's a balanced up set. And you, and you see a balanced response from the defense, right? So you got on the, on the offensive side of the ball here, here's our center. And we got one, two, three with the receiver four on one side of the ball. One, two, three with the receiver four on the other side of the ball. Balance set, uh, which gives you a balanced look from the D. You're going to see the combo blocks here. This is just a, a combo scheme. And, and starting on the back side, it's going to be these two right here. One, two to combo up on one, two. And then one, two here to combo up on one, two on the front side, one, two here to combo one, two there. And now you're going to work out, right? Most dangerous man, most dangerous man and climb and wall off to the inside. Robinson's going to be on a downhill path for the tight end. And we'll, we'll run it through and, and watch as we execute the blocks here in Atlanta. 
and Robinson's decision making there. Look, he stays on his path, and we'll go back and we'll review this real quick. Why does Robinson stay on that particular path? Okay, you see the combo blocks right at the snap. Look at everybody getting double teams. All six of the interior linemen, with the exception of the backside tight end, getting double teams on the down linemen. So everything starts with a double, which is great. You try to push those doubles as long as you can. The goal really of the offensive linemen in these three doubles here is to push these guys as far as they can and really try not to come off onto these linebackers until the backers force you to by stepping up. When the backers step up, you can come off. But until then, you're trying to push that double as far as you possibly can. So this is a great scheme from that regard in that you get doubles at the line of scrimmage. Right? We see Robinson here. Now, Robinson's got to make, an, uh, make a decision. This is really where you have to make the choice about whether you're going to bang it, bounce it, or bend it. And for him, he's going to stay on this path because he probably doesn't like this cutback lane. He probably doesn't want to go back in here because he just sees the downhill pursuit. So he's going to try to stay and be patient and let those blocks develop. A patient running style is really important for this scheme because you have to let the blocks get set up. Right? It's a fluid play. It's unlike any of you got any of you who grew up playing old school football where it was like, hey, you're running 34 power and you're running to the four hole come hell or high water. It's not like that. You're going to allow these blocks to develop right there. Robinson could probably stick his foot in the ground and square up and make a couple yards into that little seam. He probably misses that cut just a little bit, stays on his path, winds up making five yards. Got to be patient when you're running uh, the outside zone scheme. Same play, end zone view. I'd be willing to bet that if, if Robinson had his, had this back, he'd stick it in the hole right there. I mean, he, he would probably put his foot in the ground, and at this point, he would want to get north-south, try to take on that linebacker one-on-one. -on -one. You know, I think if this lineman, again, you know, you're, you're really trying to, to micromanage the blocking on the play, I think uh, uh, the center would probably want to continue reaching here, and that this double, rather than have, the guard look back, you would want him to climb and pin. If you get a pin on this backer and a pin on this backer, right now Robinson's really got a seam through which he can operate. But he doesn't see it that way, and so he just kind of stays on his play side track, and you still make five yards. It's not blocked perfectly, but it is a play that still manages to pick up five yards, and any offense will take that. Nice thing about this play is it's pretty versatile. You don't have to run it just to – the strong side, you look at Atlanta here, they get into a bunch to the top of the screen, but they're going to run this thing back to the weak side. And watch the blocking scheme here. I mean, this is a, one of the beautiful things about this play is it, it forces the defense to fit the run perfectly. You're going to get a combo block, right? The guard and the tackle on the play side are going to block out here on the end, and now you're going to see them climb to the roll down safety. That means now that on the uh, for the second stack it's the center and the backside guard that have to take care of the nose and the middle backer and this is a tough block for these guys you got to get a, a long reach here by the center and this guard's got to get all the way over and try to reach that middle backer because the running back's path is going to be right there for a ghost tight end and you would say well hey man this linebacker it sure looks like this backer should be able to get downhill and make the play but if he's overly aggressive, if he's too fast to the hole, he's got a problem. And that problem is, again, we talked about the rule, bend, bang, or bounce. He's too aggressive this way. What does Robinson do? He sticks his foot and in the ground and he makes him wrong. And so watch what happens because that middle backer has got to be patient. Because he has to be patient, That this guard doesn't quite get to him, but the middle backer doesn't get to the run fit. He's not able to get exactly where he needs to be to play Robinson because he's got to be a little bit more too patient. You know, he, that, that one little, uh, I'll go back and I'll highlight this. This one little step that the backer takes is very telling, right? Watch him right here. That hop step, that little hop step, that little hesitation is just that, that moment where he is diagnosing flow. And then he wants to make sure that he doesn't fly out of there too fast in case Robinson is uh, desiring to go backside. And so it, so the scheme really forces the defense to fit the run well, and it puts the onus on them to be great in their run fits. End zone view. Watch, watch that just a little bit of hesitation by the backer here. There's just that little kind of like hop step that he takes. 
keeps him from really getting downhill. What a great effort, too, though, by the backside guard as he tries to reach. Watch him just launch himself at the middle backer in order to try to get the piece of him that he needs to hold uh, hold the backer up and let Robinson get into the open there. The backer could take, take a little better path, but it's both the scheme and the execution by the guys up front that make this thing go. All right, now, this is stretch. This is the companion play. And like I said at the beginning of the video, the big difference is this is a predetermined outside run. And so what you'll see as this play goes is a little bit of eye candy down at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see this receiver just kind of wiggle out here to sort of pull the attention of the defense away from the run. But the, the design on the edge to the play side here is you see this nasty split by the receiver. That's because he's going to come down and crack that end. And then the fullback's going to now arc out onto the corner, and they're going to toss the ball. This is Tyler Aglier, uh, the, the other running back in Atlanta that Smith used extensively, and he's going to get on the edge, and good things are going to happen. There's your eye candy motion, crack. doesn't have to be a devastating crack block. It certainly isn't. I mean, the receiver at that point just has to get in the way of the end. Watch the receiver crack there. I mean, that's not a devastating block. He's just getting in his way. And then the fullback, he doesn't need a devastating block either. That corner wants nothing to do with the fullback. And so you crack the edge, you clear the corner, you get a bad path by the safety. I'll, I'll watch the run fit, man, by the rolled-up safety. This is a bad job by the safety here as he comes down into the run fit. These guys both wind up at the same level. This is not good defense by, by uh, Indianapolis. You should have one guy in the alley here and another coming under and instead, they all run into the block, what you, what you call block magnets. They're being block magnets, just running into the block. Uh, and, and that opens up the alley for Algalier, and then he's off to the races. So the Steelers ran these schemes last year, not nearly as well as Atlanta did. I'll just give you one example. This is stretch. This is a touchdown run for Jalen Warren. He's going to go 76 yards, 74 yards on a, on a toss concept. He's going to go wide. You're going to get a little jet motion to sort of make all these guys bump over. And then the Steelers are going to use that sort of that crack pull, that pin and pull scheme to get to the edge. What they're really going to try to do is take their two tight ends, Pat Fryer and Darnell Washington, and seal the edge here. And then Broderick Jones is going to pull around and block the corner. But what you're going to see is it's a pretty poor job. First of all, the Steelers miscommunicate it. You wind up with both these guys blocking uh, one the one defender here, and then and then the backer uh, Jeremiah uh, Cormoso is going to work over the top, and Warner's just going to make a miss, right? And that's the that's really what makes this play work. Watch it as we run it through. There's the motion they bump over. You see those two, the two tight ends stay on the same on the same uh, defender, but Warren just makes the edge miss, and then he's off to the races. So it's not really blocked great by the Steelers. Watch Broderick Jones pull and, and try to block the corner here. The, the corner, again, is going to want nothing to do with taking on Broderick Jones. Look at the corner. The corner right here, that is that is what we call an ole technique up there at the top. Ole technique, meaning, you know, uh, ole, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to matador him because I really don't want to take him on. But that's all you need to do. A big dude like that just needs to, to, to get onto the body in space. And then the Browns just, you know, the Browns are the Browns, man. So, again, bad tackle right here. Bad angle by the safety right there. And then Warren's going to make guys miss, and he's going to get into the end zone. So it turns out to be a great play for the Steelers, but it's not great execution. And so when you when you think about Arthur Smith and his offense in Pittsburgh, you're hoping that the execution improves and that the results improve uh, as well. So stretch outside zone. Arthur Smith's favorite run scheme. Expect to see a lot of it in Pittsburgh. I think Jalen Warren runs it great. I think Najee Harris is probably a little bit more of an outside zone guy. Give him the three-way go and the option to bang that thing up between the tackles. Run the stretch concept a little bit more with Warren because he's more explosive. Get him on the edge, and let's see what happens. All right, so that's the first of our Steelers playbook feature, and we'll be back shortly profiling some more schemes from what we anticipate to be the 2024 Steelers playbook.